Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, it's a hot Monday on Wendy with all of today's super sizzling hot topics all hour long. And Erica Vitrini gives us the inside scoop on some shocking casting news for Real Housewives of New Jersey and why Kim Kardashian is being accused of stealing. Plus, Food Network star Alex Gornichelli shares the secrets to her signature steak dinner celebrities can't get enough of. Now, here's Wendy. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. around the house, it was horrible in Jersey. It was like a murder scene from a horror movie, you know, because the snow is still on the ground, but it was a little warmer up here, and then it, we had a lot of rain and cloudiness, and so I spent a lot of time watching TV. <laughs> Thank you, TLC, my darlings, for the marathon of extreme couponing. <laughs> right? Right? I have to say, you know, I've talked to you, I tell you, food is my splurge. I don't clip coupons. I'm not looking at prices at the grocery store. It's the one splurge that I have. You know I'm a foodie. But I find it fascinating, people who clip coupons and go to the store. Like, there was this one woman in the marathon. She had, like, over $1,200 worth of groceries. And when she finished checking out at the cash register, the store owed her $8. <laughs> it's really... But people, is, is anybody here an extreme couponer? My, any of my co-hosts? The lady up in the back. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're here then because our show is free, so that's, that fits with your budget, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just find it fascinating. And then TLC, thank you, because right after Extreme Couponing Marathon, it was the lottery changed my life. <laughs> Do you watch that? Yeah. I love it. I don't buy lottery tickets. I always think that people are foolish for doing it, but every time somebody hits, I'm like, damn, I need to be in on this. <laughs> And the marathon that they had on was Lottery Changed My Life for the good, as opposed to for the bad. Secretly speaking, Lottery Changed My Life for the bad is better. You, you know, like when people win all this money and then they lose it foolishly. And then um, E is how I capped off my TV watching for the weekend. Last night, the Royals on E. Tens across the board! Tens! Tens! I loved it! And here's what I loved about it. What I loved about it is, normally when you think of a king and queen of England, you think of, you know, older people. Like if you hit them with a broom, dust would fall out. You know, just older and stodgy, but no. Elizabeth Hurley is the queen of England. And this is her husband, this decorated man. And he wants the monarchy to end. And these are all their kids, and everybody's high and hopped up on something. <laughs> and that's the king's brother over here at the end, and he messes around with the help. Yeah, it's like a requirement to work there. And I just, I just absolutely love it. I will be back next week. And one last thing, E, what I love most about this royal show, the accents aren't so thick that I can't understand. Because even though I speak English and they speak English, like, I'm not really good with accents. You know, like, decipher. that's why I don't watch Downton Abbey. I watched, like, 15 minutes of it one time. I'm like, what are they saying? <laughs> the accents were so thick. So thank you, TV. You were good to me this weekend. <laughs> and Kathy Griffin, it's probably best that you just bowed out because now you have more time to do what we love that you do, which is stand up and be dirty girl on the stage. <laughs> Kathy Griffin quit Fashion Police after only seven episodes. Seven episodes, and she's had it. Uh, she, if you uh, went online this weekend, you would have seen that she had this long you know, letter that she wrote us, and it was actually very, very eloquent. The only problem I had with your letter, though, Kathy, is what do you mean? She said something to the effect of she's not used to being on a show like that where you have to judge people in their clothes, something like that. And bodies and stuff. And bodies and stuff. I'm like, Kathy, what are you talking about? That's, that's, that's what you do for a living. <laughs> so doing it on Fashion Police should have been even easier because you were doing it from a chair. <laughs> anyway, but I have two theories as to why Kathy quit, personally speaking. I think that um, 
she, Juliana might be a bit of a diva and very difficult to work with. There were some, some, of the, some of the blogs, some of the very trusted ones were saying that. And then others were saying um, that she wasn't really, she and this guy Brad had a really weird relationship because Brad was always trying to be funny. And you know, when you're a funny person, I guess, you know, when you're funny for a living, like a comedian, you don't want anybody trying to be funnier than you. And that Chipula joke or whatever, that joke that Juliana told about Zendaya, that was actually written for Juliana by a male comedian. So um, anyway, the rumors are right now that the cast was not getting along and that um, Kathy was to allege to have been promised a little bit more power at the fashion police and she wasn't getting that. Now, what should they do with the show? Clap if you think they should just cancel the show. I find that interesting that so many people clap because I consider, you know, my co-host the exact people who Fashion Police caters to, fashionable and fabulous, right? <laughs> but here's what I think they should do. I'm gonna give two more recommendations and then I'm done, okay? All right, so now all we have left are Juliana Rancic and uh, Brad, all right? So we need two new people and I only have two. Number one, my friend Lloyd Boston. There's nothing wrong with having two men on Fashion Police as long as they know what they're talking about fashionably speaking. You know, Lloyd, Lloyd is easy on the eyes. I've known him for years. He's a really good talker and he's, he's funny. Lloyd can be funny if you put him in a chair, you know, to talk about fashion. So Lloyd Boston and then, oh, Chloe. Yeah. Chloe, why not? I'll be honest with you. I don't know whether I shared this with you out of my head, but in my head, I said when Joan passed away, I said Melissa should sit in Joan's seat. Not because Melissa is funny, but because Melissa knows fashion, because people love Melissa because they loved her mother. And I understand that she is the executive producer of the show, but I exec produce this show and come out and I do two jobs. You can do two jobs. Like, you can, you can do two jobs. And don't take my idea now, E or Melissa. It's a little late for that. Um, but just, you know, put two new people in and you guys, You'll be watching Fashion Police on March 30th at nine o'clock and when you watch, I'll be busy. Just tell me what happens. <laughs> Thank you. These kids these days, they're always all up in grown people's business, you know what I mean? <laughs> and not for the good, because when you know, we were growing up, we were up in their business too, but not in such an obvious way. Like my son will say to my husband and I, what, you mean Jason did what? We're like, excuse me, this is not your conversation. See your way out of it, you know? So this Teresa Giudici, good morning, Teresa. How you doing? Hey, Teresa. No, cause you guys, I was reading in the Daily News um, just a couple of days ago here in New York um, in the gossip section, one of her friends was gossiping about Teresa and they were saying that Teresa is in jail and she doesn't have internet and she does, oh, thank you. Oh, I can read you um, the quote. <laughs> Teresa doesn't have internet access. She'll most likely find out about this from TV, perhaps Wendy Williams. <laughs> Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, inmates. How are you today? <laughs> Teresa's 14-year-old daughter, uh, Gia, is sticking up for her father. Now, you remember last week, I was telling you that In Touch Weekly Magazine um, has accused uh, uh, Joe of cheating with this girl right here who's exposing her breasts and he's all leaned up in her hairline. <laughs> Now, he says that she wasn't cheating. He said it was a business meeting. Is that what we're calling it today? Okay, uh-huh. He's denying cheating, so let's just go with that. They were in Atlantic City. Just say, okay. This uh, grown woman here in the middle is 14-year-old Gia. If you have 14-year-old boys, then you know, this is, this is what they're looking at. Be, be afraid, very afraid. Beautiful girl, but way too much, just too much, and I don't care if she's about to perform something. Look, and the exposure in the waist at the same time. Anyway, Gia's 14 and now she's chiming in on the cheatation. Oh. Now see, this is where young people need to stay out of grown people's business. <laughs> but I'm gonna defend Gia right here because I know 14 year olds can be very mean. Teresa doesn't have, oh wait, that's me, wait. <laughs> this is Gia, this is Gia. Honestly, it's hilarious how people go out of their way to make my family look bad. Hashtag nice try people. I need a break from all this, a new beginning. Oh. Can you imagine at 14 needing a new beginning? <laughs> You've only just begun, young lady, but I know why she did it. And, you know, there were a lot of my staffers here that were very, very mad that, um, that she got involved, but these are staffers that don't have children, so therefore, they're always judging, <laughs> parenting. Um, she's 14, you remember how that was, and you remember 14, you're a freshman in high school. You remember how mean kids could be, especially if you're a halfway cute girl, and your parents halfway have a couple of coins, and, and you know what I'm saying, and you're, 
on, you know, one of the hottest reality shows, you know, in, in, in the country, you can see where kids probably go out of their way to be mean to her. Oh, I bet you high school is no picnic for this kid or any of the other reality kids, you know? They're the ones who, like, you take that In Touch Weekly magazine and you TP her locker with it. So when she shows up at school, she's got a face, like, I'm not a mean girl, but I have mean girl ways in my head. <laughs> like, you, you know, you know how, you, you just get under her skin every day. So of course, when the In Touch comes out, it's accusing her dad of cheating. What do you think the other kids were doing all through the high school? Hmm, you might think you're cute, but your dad is a cheat. Your mama wears combat boots and she's in jail. Like, you know, Joe, this is all your fault. This is all your fault. You need to get um, Gia off social media. I understand she wanted to defend, and these kids think they're grown these days, but she doesn't need to be on Twitter because she, as she scrolls down, she's gonna read some things that hurt her feelings beyond repair. That's it. Um, good morning, Teresa. Teresa, by the way, later on, I'm going to be talking about you. Teresa, <laughs> do you realize that when you get out of jail, you won't have a job? We're gonna talk about your replacement. Whoa. Just saying. Yeah, in the inside scoop. We got the inside scoop coming up. So, I mean, I mean, it depends on how you look at this. I say this is good news for Mariah Carey. She's gonna be making music again. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people feel that Mariah doesn't need to make any more music. I mean. On one hand, I don't feel she, like she needs to make any more music. She's got such a body of work and we all know the words to it. And I think that, you know, for a woman who's as fragile as she is. <laughs> but, you know, she's fragile and she's older and she's not able to keep up musically with what these kids are, like she's trying to battle in a Rihanna world and it just hasn't worked for her. So why should she torture herself at 44 years old with her twins under her belt, still having some of her looks? This residency in Vegas, I think is the perfect thing for Mariah because you'll go, your parents will go, your kids will go. Like, Mariah is for everybody. <laughs> on one hand. So, on one hand, I don't want her making any more music because I don't feel like learning any more new songs. <laughs> but on the other hand, I think it's fabulous that she's making more music because it'll just take her mind off her troubles. She, she thinks she's doing something by going to the studio and, and belting out stuff. And she'll probably call in some dusty rappers to do the one who's... <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, you, you know, it just, it just, she's gonna be grasping at sh straws that a lot of people won't care about, and then she'll be very upset when she sees the music sales aren't what they should be. And b you know, she's a little off balance. We, she doesn't need to be upset. She needs to be occupied. And that studio, I think, is where she needs to be. So, L.A. Reid, the man who they say saved her after Glitter, and I say, no, Glitter is one of the best movies ever. <laughs> Are you serious? You know, like in a, in a cheesy kind of way. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so after Glitter, everybody made fun of Mariah and L.A. Reid came, came along and saved the day. Well, now he's come along and saved the day again and he assigned Mariah to his L.A. Reid records. The deal though, the deal is like a fraction of what she is used to signing for, but music doesn't sell the way it did. It's a sign of the time. You don't buy music the way you did. The deals aren't offered the way they did. Oh, Mariah, listen. I'm telling you, other than being in the studio, you need to go out on a couple of dates and you need to be photographed out there because otherwise, I mean, so far in this divorce bounce back game, Nick is still winning. Like Nick is out doing the most, having the time of his life. And now he's gone to the extreme, <laughs> and now he's gone to the extreme to get Mariah off his back. His new tattoo is complete. Let's analyze. Oh. Now, first of all, it's just so horrible looking, but then that's me judging. I'm an old lady and I hate tattoos. Um, but look, so he got this tattoo. We got this picture. Thank you, TMZ. Thank you, Harvey. <laughs> I took this off a of Buick outside. I'll put it back on. It's an antenna. Look, Nick, I still see the M. Do you see the outline? Like you did all this. I still see the outline of the M. Do you see it? Squint. Okay, can you, we show side by side so you can, they can see what the M looks like originally? Yep. Okay, now show a close up again of Nick. Do you see the M? Yes. Now, if you squint even harder, <laughs> do you see the H? Yes. Do you see a mess? Yes. <laughs> Mariah, good luck with your residency, good luck with that studio work, and good luck with moving on with your life. I believe every relationship that you see in magazines. Now, I know I do a lot of talking here in the purple chair, but I, I always tell you, squint and listen closer, I always tell you if I don't believe the relationship, if I only believe somebody's hooking up or if I only believe it's gonna last for five seconds, I will tell you. For instance, Lupita and Common. Oh, the Twitterverse is on fire. <laughs> they think that Lupita, the actress, is actually dating Common, the rapper. 
Well, excuse me, but they did go uh, see an off-Broadway play, and they went out for dinner, and I, in my mind, I bet you they hooked up. In my mind. But when you're a grown person and you hook up with somebody, it doesn't mean everybody's falling in love. It, sometimes it just means two Oscar winners want to have a good time. And, And remember, just last week I was telling you that he was seen out with his mom and his old girlfriend, or yeah, his mom and his old girlfriend, Serena Williams. In my mind, I secretly hope they get back together. Oh, yeah. I do. But Common has a type, and I like Common. Shout out to everybody in, in uh, Chicago. Uh, you know, Common is one of those decent men. Like, he won't call you a B when he gets mad at you. <laughs> I mean, I've never been in a fight with him, I don't know, when he does in his house. But in my mind, he won't call you the B word, he always opens the door for you, he calls you, you know, you're my star, or dog. you know, he has like cute names for you. And he pamper, he rub your feet, <laughs> you know? Like, and he has a type. And it, like, he likes an earthy girl, in my mind, that doesn't use deodorant. <laughs> or shave her legs. <laughs> or do much to her hair. <laughs> unless she's on the red carpet. Now there's nothing, or wear makeup. There's nothing wrong with an earthy girl, a lot of men have the type. Common from, who are his girlfriends? Um, the, the crazy one? Uh, well, Badu. Uh, Erica Badu. That, that was several ticks. Um, who else? Um, Serena. Serena's got like a little earthy vibe to her, you know what I mean? And by the way, the shaving and the deodorant thing, that's, that's not a jab. That's just a personal choice a lot of people have. They use that black soap. Oh, you don't know about the black soap. Um, on another show, I'll explain. Anyway, um, so congratulations, Common. He, you know, girls really like him, but I do think that Common is secretly the player of life. At, because that behavior that he puts out there is like the worm on the hook. The, the worm on the hook. He kills you with niceness and kindness and being a man's man and then slays you when the door closes. <laughs> you know, Mama June? Um, I almost forgot you were around. <laughs> you know, because we haven't talked about Mama June in so long. Excuse you. <laughs> Now, that's a big woman. But you've never sat next to her on a couch. I have. Mama June is a very attractive woman. All right, only, only real adults can understand this, okay? Because everybody looks at all the fat and all of a sudden everybody's judging. But come on, you all. Her eyes are like the color of Cameron Diaz's eyes. I mean, right now they're being enclosed by rolliness, but. are really, really beautiful. Is she, is she, right, Suzanne? No. Grow up, <laughs> grow up. I, I didn't notice when she was here, but I, I wasn't like right. Well, I was. I was like 10 feet away. I didn't okay, see well you have to be right up on her to see the beauty. <laughs> and now here's the problem. My, that Honey Boo Boo show is dead in the water. You know, they fired him from that. So I don't know what she's gonna do. Uh, her daughter, Honey Boo Boo, is getting older, a little too old. She's getting a little too old to be that cute little girl that we knew before. So Mama June's gotta do, I guess, something for a few dollars. So she has plans on Joining The Biggest Loser. Wow. And, right? It's a great idea. And she wants to drop 100 pounds. And when she drops that 100 pounds, you watch. You're gonna eat your words. She's a pretty woman. She's only like 33 or 34 years old. She's li lived her whole life like this. So she's young enough, she's already divorced from Sugar Bear. So why shouldn't she have, why sh <laughs> Look. She's divorced from Sugar Bear, she's a young woman. Why shouldn't she have the opportunity to go on and make a life for herself 100 pounds lighter? And why should she have to pay for it if she can do it on TV? I think The Biggest Loser needs to have um, not just Mama June, but they need to call up Rob Kardashian because that would be a reason to watch. <laughs> Biggest Loser, like I love your show. But, and I love The Biggest Loser. But I loved it because Jillian, um, you know, made me love it. But she's not there anymore. So, you know, people need reasons to be excited about the new season of Biggest Loser. And I think that Rob and Mama June would be perfect. Good luck, Biggest Loser. <laughs> so, so, I'm very excited to tell you that we're partnering up with Avon 39, the walk to end breast cancer. This is a very big deal. This walk is 39 miles over two days. You know about this walk, you're no stranger. But listen, if you challenge yourself to do any event this year, this should be the one. H. Walker commits to uh, fundraising $1,800. And the money goes, of course, to support breast cancer programs across the country. Yeah. Now, um, 
The walks are happening um, in seven cities across our country and I will be representing the Wendy Show here in New York City. For the walk. And, so, and I'm, I'm very proud to shout out to our first registered Wendy watchers in the audience today. Welcome. Welcome. Listen, if you'd like to walk in your city, go to the link below and register and get a special discount on your registration.